Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah from the Automator, and today we're going to cover four different solutions that I came up with. And so often I was typing one thing, but slightly different variations, and it was really annoying. And uh, I started playing with it, and it was just you know really particular. So we're going to cover this, but hold out to the end because you'll see that each approach is very different, and depending on you know what your usage is and what your needs are, you might like one over the other. But we thought we'd demonstrate them, and, and Isaiah hasn't really commented on the he's he basically saw them but we, i want to get his feedback and thoughts about maybe different approaches that we could have taken so yeah all right so let me go ahead and share my screen here there you go. So, so these so, are you know hot strings that i use a lot and there's a very very clear pattern and that's part of this thing is like there was this really clear pattern where it's always you know this is the base the automator.com and then a keyword right and then right. it's that's what you'll see. And, and what I'm what I'm thinking is that then in certain situations you want to add the you know the HTTPS or the source, right. uh, but in some others you want to strip those out or have it as right. slightly different, even though it's the same hotkey, it's the same web page, but without some things, right? So so let me do a quick example here without doing it. So so let's have this. So if I'm on YouTube and we're doing a live stream, mm -hmm. I want it to be like this because if you don't have the HTTPS in front, it's not a hyperlink for people when you paste it, right? Okay. If we're in Canva or in, and I'm using OBS, normally have it over my head, right? I don't want to have, it's just an image, right? So I don't want this. I don't, so I just want this. So it's nice and clean and tight. But right. if I'm doing the newsletter, that's when I will add a query parameter and often say like the newsletter or whatever. So if you're not a newsletter right. subscriber, sign up. But um, that way I know when people click this link, they clicked it from a newsletter so I can track right. it, right? So right. those right now are the three simple ones. Now I also have some, which I'll, you'll see in here also where, hey, I might want to run, like for our courses, we have folders, right? On our computer, on the courses. So why not if I want to go to the objects course, allow me to run the folder for the objects, right? Right. So, uh, and you, you know our structure for our files, where they are. I'm like, this is, right. you know, this is really cool, right? So then, basically, it would be the same hot string, but with little different right, variations. Right. Okay. What another one was when I'm writing the HTML email, often I will have links, you know, an actual a tag reference, not just the mm -hmm. URL, but actually like the image for the course, right? right. Why not have that also? So. I was like, there's a lot of different things I have around the same thing. And if I structure everything right, it'll be really, really easy. So that was I the... Say, I would say this is the interesting part. That's where a function comes in because it performs the same action with, with slight variations. And then the function can be written to send the text or run the query or whatever. But then you add parameters that would allow you to do different little things. So right. I would right well, away think about a function, but right. let's see what How, are the however, other options you have. Yeah, and that's where with hot strings, even with the hot string function, you know, um, actual command, it was very particular what you could do. Okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when I first started doing this and I was lazy, I'm like, you know what? Hey, this beginning part is always the same length. And then I'm always stripping it from the question mark forward. Um, right. Although, so, so... This is a function I have, which I'm not including here, but it just gets a selected text, copies it to the clipboard. And then it would take that. And so it takes the clipboard. It starts at the ninth position. So if we look here, which actually, if I, well, I have it highlighted, so that should count as eight. So the ninth position, that's where it starts, right? Right. So it would get from there over up to, because I was using stir split, up to the first question mark. And this is where it's the first because it would, I'm doing dot one here. Yeah, it would it would yeah. do a split in two sections. Yeah. So let me actually I'll launch this. Part. Okay, cool. I'll launch this. I'm gonna highlight the whole thing. So this would be what would be there, but notice it automatically right. trimmed it off for me, right? And right. Awesome. this isn't great, but it's also this is just one of those things I mentioned. I'm like, okay, then I'd have yeah, to not only that, you might need a different link. So are you gonna be selecting every single time or do you just want it to be typed? As soon well, as you it, put the hot string, it yeah, would be right. tied correctly. Right. Yeah, okay. and that's where I'm like, but, it, you know, it, it worked. I'm like, all right. Which, that, this is the removing after you typed the hot right. string. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, which I don't didn't love, but I'm like, well, at least it's it's better than manually doing it. <laughs> right? Not by it a lot. Works. That's not better. It works. <laughs> and then you, because I had, you and I had talked about this, what, like three weeks ago, and I was just saying it, I brought up the idea, but we didn't go far, but you said, well, we could use a toggle, 
And I was watching um, a video the other day, and they they brought up the toggle again. And I thought, you know what? Let me go back to that. So this right here, checking the key state for the caps lock, whether it's true or not, you know, it'll come back and say, is the caps lock, you know, on or off, right? right. And then depending if it's on or off, um, if it's one, and here I just condensed this into to two lines just so it was um, – you know, uh, two ternaries I can put on one line, right? But it's really just two ternaries. You can see that we do the, the pre and the post. And then later when they get triggered, it, it adds the, depending off the toggles there. So that's why these are both on one line and they don't have to use the brackets either. But mm -hmm. um, if the toggles there, it's going to pre and put values into the pre and post. Mm -hmm. And if they're not there, then it doesn't do it. So it's also interesting is that it's a the caps lock works as a toggle, turns them on and turns them off. And this is where I think it was Sunday morning where I was like, hey, how do I how do I get this to send the text in the case it's in? Because the problem was when I was using the caps lock to turn it on, then whatever I typed was in uppercase. And of course, auto hotkey, if everything you type is uppercase, it sends it all in uppercase. And the, the hot string goes in the the case uh, that you have uh, right now. So if you type everything in uppercase, the hot string is going to come up in uppercase. That's where the C1 uh, right. property uh, or, well, one of the options right. comes in because it says do not conform to the press case that you have. Just go yeah. ahead and write, it, send it as is written in the script, which is good. Another way to go around that is to use a different key as a toggle. So what I suggested was instead of using the caps lock, why don't you use the scroll lock? Because right. the scroll lock doesn't really modify right. most of the application, so you wouldn't really notice. But then you said like, oh well, I will forget that it's on or off, right? No, it's it, that true. Yes, but it's uh, more about finding it on my keyboard. And, and right, the caps lock exactly. is right there. I can hit it very simple. right. It is something that you have right yeah. there. Yeah, and it was um, really, it was also very unfortunate. I couldn't use the Windows or the Alt keys. Um, it when you when you hit it and try to type, it doesn't pick up on the letter that you're typing. You know, like when you're typing. Plus, it, 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 they're right. also not toggles, right? It needs to be. There were three keys, if I remember right, reading the documentation. And the that, scroll lock, yeah, exactly. Actually, what other was it? The num lock, num lock, maybe. Yeah, num lock. But but here's the other thing. Um, the, this is where I then suggested, why don't you use the alt as a toggle? Well, you have, you can add a new hotkey now for the alt key that when you press it, modifies the variable toggle to either one or two, uh, false. So that would definitely be a workaround that even though you cannot type while, while alt is selected, but you can just definitely just hit alt once and it switches the variable on or off yeah but and and it would be another uh, kind of like a workaround right but i also have so many alt triggers for other things that just oh okay you know, but okay. no the state because here's the other thing i didn't mention is usually when i'm doing this i often want to keep that state for a while right like i'm doing one thing i'm doing the newsletter i want all of them to have the newsletter you know the the full things on with the wrapper mm -hmm. Uh, and then we're doing a live call. Oh, that's when I want, you know, the I'm doing other stuff. Anyway, it, it it's usually like a sticky is my point. And that if right. I was using a, a key like the alt key, I would be changing it so often because of all my other keys. All um, right. That is correct. So in, in your particular instance is that, okay, you, you um, already have a use for the alt key. I don't know if the control key or the shift key. But it could be any any key, and I would use what is called a, a chord, which is, for example, pressing the period two times would toggle my mm. toggle, right? Kind of like that. Not only just pressing the key, but pressing it twice or pressing it three times would turn on the toggle. And as it is a variable here in line 11, I could modify that variable with any action I want. It's just like in this particular instance, we're using caps lock or old or whatever, but it could be any yeah, action. I like that, that better, yeah. Right, that's a that's a, a, another approach that we could think right. of. But this also is very limiting in that it only allows me to basically have an on or off for a thing. Like, I mean, the, right. I guess you could set different stages of it, right? 
But yeah. there's also, which is the one thing I, I wish on, like I can see them, but my caps lock and num lock and stuff, I have little lights, but they're so small. Like you'd really have to really okay. study it to go, is it on? Right. Wait, that's that yeah, exactly. okay. <laughs> uh, there was a yeah, bigger was you know thing that might be handy. Or maybe I could put a little little block uh, up on the title bar or something to, to so indicate it. Like that, that, that might be or something. Yeah, yes, right. I understand. So anyway, um, that was this approach. I didn't love it or hate it. It was just like, you know, this this would work. I could do that. Mm -hmm. But let's go on to the next one. This one I thought was really in interesting overall was uh, now I'm I'm using this and you can, with this X command, you can call it as a, you can basically make over here uh, either like a command or a function call or whatever you want, right? Was I'm like, that's, yeah. when I saw this a while back, I'm like, why would I use this? <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, what the hell am I going to do with that, right? Like, because, and I told no, you, yeah. to me, hot strings are about like sending text. I don't use them to trigger things usually. You know, in this case, you are now, now yeah, triggering right. a function that will yeah. send the text. But the thing right. is, it is going to do it with certain parameters. And this is interesting because now you can call the function you can put a comma there and call a parameter that tells you whether it's going to strip stuff from the beginning, add the two pre and post, or send it raw. So well, you could have like different states yeah. depending on what you want to send. Yeah. But but the other thing that um, where I got to was, uh, like I said before, I couldn't use the alt key or the windows key um, mm -hmm. or the shift key necessarily to, uh, to, to interact with the hot string easily. But... Now, what I did was I call the function. So let's go to jump to wrapper, bring in learn, because this is what we're going to end up sending. Whatever this is, we're going to end up sending or we're going to do something with it. Um, mm -hmm. But then I said, hey, let me sleep. Give me a little bit of time, because unfortunately, depending on the key, some of them like the left alt. Uh, OK, I can hit that in a tiny split second. But hitting the Windows key or the shift key like that takes me a little bit longer. So I said, let me have a little delay for me to press the key down. And then the script says, OK. What, and this is where it's really, I loved about it, was it's really cool, is I can actually say, hey, what what key do I want to check to see if it's pressed down at that point in time, right? Or key combinations or whatever, like the possibilities are endless. What I also realized after I wrote it, I just didn't go back and fix it, is I was creating different variables, but there's no reason to create different variables. I can create one variable with a different value and then just right. use logic on it, right? But yeah. in my head, I was at first doing this. Which um, is correct. That's That's how you start. That's good. Yeah, and later on you refactor it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then it was just like, hey, if if shift if this is a thing, go do uh -huh. this, right? right? If the left windows was down, hey, let's put this path here in front of the word, and then right. we're going to run it, and that would open the folder, right? Right. Um, and then if the left alt was down, it's going to. This is the HTML version of like, right. okay, we're going to go, you know, put it in actual HTML. Perfect. Well, and in any other case, if nothing is pressed down, then it's going to send the whole thing, like right. uh, the, the right. URL. Yeah. That's interesting, yeah. So I thought this was a really neat, not necessarily for this solution, but it was just a an eye-opener for me of like, you know, I really might want to, at times, have something that I do, and then it's it's like have a little, you know, a breather where I can then do something else to choose. But basically, like you said earlier, to choose what parameter gets passed or whatever, right? To choose right, the options right. that I want. Um, so, yeah. So that was now, interesting. Just just before you yeah. you continue here, um, there is something interesting that you can do too. Is just instead of sleeping, you could go ahead and use the key wait command in certain situations. In this one, it doesn't work because you're you're waiting for three different keys, but you cannot do it right like. I'm thinking, but if yeah. you're just waiting for one key, you could wait for the alt key until it's being pressed. So you could say, send the wrapper, wait for alt, and when that happens, then I will do this. And that is an interesting, uh, and you can have a timeout, like actually right. key wait for the alt key for one second, key wait for the control key for one second, and if you didn't press any of those, then don't do anything or do a specific action. So those are kind of things that we could go ahead and um see, I yeah, because see, I really didn't like, and I know you and I've been talking about a lot lately too, is we quote unquote don't use sleeps. You know what I mean? Like in exactly. Our yeah, yeah, that's that's what I meant. Like, for example, yeah. like we cannot use the sleep right now, uh, or or if I don't want to sleep for exactly right. one second. Right. I just want to wait right. for it until right. I press it. 
Yeah. That's a one yeah. way that yeah. you could try that. But in this particular instance, as you're waiting for three different keys, I don't think the well, keyway command can do that easily. No, but you know what I could do is put that in like in a set timer, right? And get the key state of each of those. And when one of them is finally pressed. Okay, that's another action, way. Right? right, that's another way. This, again, sometimes it would take you one second, two seconds. Sometimes it's not going to take you one right, second. It's going to be right. faster. So yeah. that's a, 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 a workaround for the sleep at this yeah. point. Yeah, also that approach would... Well, like you said, you could have a timeout. I was going to say it was going to, it would require you to hit a key where in my case, I could just not hit something and have a default action happen. Yeah, right. But but, that, that's where the timeout would yeah, come right. into. But that's a good, you know, idea there. So the, the last approach I came up with, which was one of the first things that you and I talked about was I yeah. can just have context sensitive ones. And so what I did was I realized, Hey, you know what, when, um, when the little thing for over my head is up or with YouTube, um, those are both really kind of the same. Ian, I'm going to, you know, act, uh, do a certain hotkey in that case or hot string. Um, mm -hmm. If YouTube is there, okay, then I will do that. Oh, this was, sorry. This one was, I forgot about it. Um, I should have put it here in the comments. Oops. This was Canva. Canva was interesting when you're on the website. The title never says Canva. It just says Chrome and whatever. Really? Right? So I'm like, oh, crap, wow. how do I, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. But I do, because the thing is, I'm always creating my YouTube thumbnail and it's on that, that is in okay. the title when I'm using it. So I'm okay. like, okay, when when that's there, great. Just send the plain stuff. Because so either Canva or the thing over my head, great. Um, but when I'm in YouTube, I want to have the HTTPS, as I mentioned. Um, right. And then when I'm in um, otherwise, any, basically anywhere else is this is the norm for me, so that that's fine. Perfect. What I loved about this is I no longer have to think, right? Like it it works for me, and I don't have to think about okay, I'm doing this now. What am I going to hit next, or do I hit it the next second, or do something after? It's all automatic, and it, it might take that a little right. tweaks. Now, now here's one of the things that you were mentioning about this, which is oh, now I have duplicate. Uh, right. lines but we were uh talking about an editor that is you know right most of the most uh right. you know modern editors allow yeah. you to select yeah. one word everywhere in the document at once so you could modify that easily well if i would still don't want to yeah i would just go back to my original one and i can copy it all you know copy it paste it and then just do the multi-line typing Oops. right for for yeah, to, to or do search replace, right? But just select the stuff you right. want. Then it wouldn't. So, what annoyed me about this approach isn't the amount of work to maintain it. It was that it's not sexy. It's it's <laughs> a, I have the same oh, new thing yeah. multiple times. That right is like sort of now I do think of myself as a programmer. That's stupid, right? <laughs> <laughs> but because it's so much easier to actually, you know, it's going to work right automatically. I'm like, no, but this is this is the interesting part. What what I would do again, uh, there it is a combination of two approaches, and I think this is the best solution. The combination would be the using of the active windows to call the function. So so using the active window for the hot strings, and using a function at the same time to do this logic of deciding what to send. And I don't know if you want me to show a very quick, simple example of what I mean, because it is, it is. Um, I think it is the best solution that you have at the moment. And basically what you want to do is um, have the function. So you had, you know, G um, learn, right? This is one of the things. And basically what you're gonna do instead is just send the parameter that you want as you had it, right? Yep. And this is something that I, now that I think about it, is there a way for me to pass this part to the function well, automatically? You can, you can say a the a current hot key or whatever, right? So inside the function, you can pull that, I believe. Oh, right. But but right, uh, this well, hot key, so was a this hot. But, key. but that's that's for hot keys. But I don't. Think oh, it works here too. Yeah. For no, station? it's a bad name. Yeah. It, <laughs> oh, yeah. man. That's so weird. I tested it because I was like, how? Because at first I was going on that route. How do I get what was triggered? And then and then I just realized, well, if I just pass, you know, what right. I want in the in the parameter, I don't have to worry about what was triggered. But you can because that was initially I was having it where a dot 
is for the A tags, and then uh -huh. P dot is for paths on my computer. And, and B and I was going to look at right, that. Right. What was triggered, you know, and then act differently. Right. Uh, but basically, here I could use something like this, which says all my functions. And, and the reason why I wanted to do this thing about, uh, well, we could do this. A, this hotkey is probably what you meant. Well, I was using that in my function. Oh, inside the it, function. It automatically it gets it gets there when it gets okay. triggered. It will show you. Okay, what, that's that's what? that's better because what I was thinking is this. Check this out. Yeah. I was passing uh, the action, and then for me, I would check for uh, a this hotkey like get the last. Th let, let me do that because I, I I have never seen that actually. I do not understand what you meant by that. So um, if I do G, um, oh, the if when active is the one that is. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really look, uh, studying it. Right. I'm kind of watching what you're typing. Whoa, that's amazing. Yeah, isn't that weird? It threw me when it I'm is, like. It is really weird because I was now, like, why is there why is there no A this hot string? And, and then I'm right. like, just try it. And I'm like, oh, hey, it's there. Yeah. Because then you could definitely do this with let me let me make this a little bigger yeah i was thinking a little about the the stuff you did for michael um of you you're pulling in what was there and, and trimming it and you know we could build logic around it based on what was actually part of that trigger oh a dot <laughs> not a comma so so g dot learn there it is so i i can get just the last three digits right, right. and i could switch on that which means that I could, um, or, you know, if else statements, whatever you feel more comfortable with, but basically sure, yeah. I could definitely say if the case is LEA, then the, um, and this is what I wanted to send, uh, the, the, the page or, you know, the actual page is learn, right? Which is the part that is going to be sent to my, so I'm going to send, well, right? And this approach would obviously be far better when you're doing maintainability, your right? And maintainability. I don't know about that. <laughs> <But> yeah, anyway, <laughs> because because, yeah. because I could just change what the case does for the page at the end. But but my point was that now you call for each of the hot strings. So you have different hot strings and now objects, for example. Now for each of them, I just have to have a case of what the object does. So at this point, the page is just the object. And, and that was it for me to add a new one. So basically I call my string, pass this, and the action that I want is the one that decides whether I'm gonna send it, run the path, or if I'm gonna append or prepend stuff. You see what I mean? In only one function. In my mind, it's easier for me to just switch whether, for example, if when active YouTube, this thing is actually going to send, what is it, like HTTP. And that would add the HTTP to it only. And But in general, again, I, I don't want to get too deep into it. I think a combination of the if when active with one function that I have to maintain instead of hundreds of lines of code that I have to modify in three places. But you're still, yeah, I see. I disagree. I mean, <laughs> well, to me, it starts, you're splitting stuff over different lines and it just becomes much more complicated um, when you're trying to add a new thing. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But in general, that, that, that would be my way of understanding it easier. In your case, having, having the, the things in kind of like sections for you makes a little bit more sense. Oh, it's so simple. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. And then, and then the thing is, everybody would understand the code. It works the same. It's just about how you feel a little, how do you understand the code? How, however, it's easier for right. you to understand right. it. Right. Yeah. No, with, with where you, on your example, what I was going to say was, see, I, in my head, it was also easier if I just had the, because if I want a path, I would type P dot learn. If I want okay. the, HTML, the A tag, it'd be A dot learn. You know, and, okay. and so for me, that was really easy. It was just, 
crap, I don't want to be writing this multiple times over and over. And and that's where now with that, we could parse it easily. And uh, But still, it's, again, there's so many different ways you could approach this thing, right? Like, Definitely. Uh, there's no right solution. Definitely. Yeah. Hope everyone found that helpful. Um, if you learned something, please like the video. It really helps us out. Um, we are the largest auto hockey, uh, largest and best, let's say, auto hockey channel. Now. <laughs> and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Cheers. Okay.